called the Rutherford County Public Works and Planning Committee to order. I'm going to ask uh, Commissioner Spark to read us a prayer. Madam, Mr. Heaven, come before you. I'm the Marshal's asking for direction upon this um, body here tonight, Lord. I ask you to bless our school system, bless our uh, fire and police, Lord, bless our teachers, and bless those that are suffering with sickness and disease. Just ask you for wisdom and guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, first call will be to approve the minutes for the last meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, building codes. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, reports on the table. Building codes department issued 130 permits for October. Our money is taken in was $125 for plan review, $21,667 for building permits, $4,365 for plumbing permits, $800 for gas permits, for a total of $26,957. Uh, On the back of our report, we have our Totals for the year, 324 single-family dwellings have been issued this year, 19 single-families this October compared to 17 last October. We're looking <coughs> about 32.4 houses for the first 10 months of this year compared to 35.8 last year. So we're running about three houses per month uh, less this year than we did last year at this time. Total permits issued was 130 for the 10 months, 1,720 permits have been issued. On the uh, next report is our zoning inspection for property maintenance. We performed 155 inspections, BZA and conditional uses, sign, sign inspections was 120. Uh, new cases for October was 20, closed cases was 41. Our total inspections for the year, 1,700 on property maintenance, 1,514 on BZA and signs. Our next report is the development tax collection. Building Coast Department took in $45,750. Planning department took in $26,250 for a total of $72,000. Our cumulative total fiscal year, $401,250. Our collections are below that with um, Laverne coming in at the highest for October, $31,500, I think. Uh, Planning took that in for Lake Forest mostly. Uh, Lake Forest had a new section come up <laughs> in Laverne. And uh, that's my report, Mr. Chairman. Anybody got any questions on the report? I don't know, I'll take a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. For the steel building in Lake Forest. Yeah, I don't know how many lots I can do, uh, or maybe uh, the report um, might have that information on how many of the first is still active. Yeah. <laughs> David, real quick on, on some of your zoning enforcement, on some of these violations on there. When, when you go through the, the process, like the, the court process and so forth for enforcement, do you have much, much luck or do you have a difficult time trying to get things? We, we have pretty good luck with our uh, enforcement. We don't like to take anyone to court and we try to work it out before <coughs> we get there. Of course, there is times when we do have to cite them to court and then um, kind of gets their attention to uh, um, go ahead and, and come into compliance. It just gives them a little bit more time usually to yeah. come into compliance, but most of them do come into compliance. I've just got uh, a 
question about a, a particular situation, but without getting into the particulars of that, I'm looking at the at the broader picture on this. Uh, we've got a, I know you're very aware of as well as Mayor Burgess and myself about a uh, situation in a small subdivision about dogs barking and a business that's being in there. What could we better do in the regulations to help the people that are out there because it seems to be difficult from what I'm reading and what you're saying and what Mayor Burgess is saying to do anything about somebody operating a business. Um, and, uh, the particular business you're speaking of uh, did come into compliance. The problem is usually they are back out of compliance in two or three months. Right, so and I, think just that's, a, I think that's it a It kind of gets to be a, a never-ending circle sometimes uh, with us being called out on complaint after complaint. Of course, if they come into compliance with our first uh, initial uh, uh, enforcement, uh, we have to start all over again when, when we receive another complaint. This, uh, as, far as, as far as I know, I, I have to have real good evidence that they're running the business. I have to have, um, I don't have any evidence right now that the business is still in operation, although it may be. So we're working on that end of it. But uh, right now, uh, mostly the uh, noise, repetitious barking and, and uh, nuisance to the neighborhood, we're, we're going to cover that in court probably. I, I know, is there, uh, and it may not be a situation that we can do anything about, a particular number of animals that there's no restrictions on the number of animals even in subdivisions is there right no I know that we came up and we were there was some discussion about somebody wanting to put goats and chickens in subdivisions through uh, public safety and there was some discussion about what would be done about that and after that discussion I was thinking maybe we could encompass everything and if you had any suggestions of what could be Done, and I'm not asking for one tonight, but just to be mm -hmm. thinking of what what could be done to give the people that are around them that are obviously frustrated because they've got a petition going, and there's a bunch of people that are that are unhappy with this, mm -hmm. and of course I get phone calls. So. That that may be one solution for us limiting the number, uh, may control it a little bit better, but uh, I, I don't know if uh, that's the answer until we try it, you know. Okay. Well, if you just come up with some suggestions, I mean, I okay. have thoughts on that. Okay. I, just, I think that when maybe legislatively we, we, we can do something to get rid of the problems that were coming up about goats and chickens and subdivisions and somebody having, in this case out there, uh, 30 or 40 dogs, which, you know, pet lovers are one thing, but after a certain point, it's got to be... Uh, uh, a problem. Yeah, it can be a it can be a problem on the oh, on, on small acreage with that many yeah, yeah. With that many oh, in, in subdivisions is what I'm sure. talking about. So. Yeah. and and I know Rabies Control has answered several calls at that location also. So. Yeah, about thirty or so I think <clears throat> they've done that. So yeah. couldn't the health department help out with that if there's forty or fifty dogs in well, a subdivision lot? Well. I don't know what the answer is. I'm just trying so. to figure out. I mean, I know David and and uh, and the mayor have been trying to work toward a solution on this, and you know everybody's got certain rights that they can do something. But is that an answer to, for the health department or no? No, no I okay. don't think the health department uh, has the uh, manpower to. Uh, to get out and investigate that. Right, right, right. I don't think they investigate those kind of cases. So, um, I, I do know the health department got involved one time in a substandard housing and, of course, called us out. So, so yeah, you were right back. Yeah, we were. This goes right around the circle. Okay. okay. But we'll work on it. We'll try to come up with something that may work for everybody and uh, try to control some of the um, high numbers that could be in a subdivision, possibly. I know animal yeah. control. Told me so they were going to be making a little bit more regular visits. Yeah, and the there. problem, see, and I, that, I, I that went that by there um, last Friday. is the quietest neighborhood you'd ever want to see. But at 10 o'clock at night, it may be a different situation. And um, that's usually the case, mm -hmm. you know, when we go by or when we try to uh, document a violation, 
it's during working hours and when everybody gets home everybody's dogs gets out and there you are you know so uh, I, I don't know if it needs they to they feed them when you go yeah <laughs> i don't know if it needs to fall under rabies control possibly if with with their uh, uh surveillance that, that they have possibly at nine or whatever okay well they run by kennel or something they had a kennel they had a business they were uh had an online business and in, in the uh as far as i know that has ceased online and, and so hopefully we've got control of some of that and we did get down to a certain number of dogs that we inspected for just from their help in a number you know we just asked them well what can you get down to comfortably or whatever even though we didn't have a, a number on our books but uh, we did work with them they gave us a number and we confirmed that so everything was uh and that's a well. like subdivision that you're speaking sir of. Platin subdivision, what you're speaking yes. of. Yes, yes, uh, right. nature subdivision. Okay, not, not in, but just in the platted subdivision is what, what I'm looking at. We'll, we'll work on it, see if we can come up with some things. And there's a possibility even limiting the number of dogs may not help. You may have four barking dogs <laughs> to make a lot more noise than, say, your dogs, and you've got 50, but not a one of them bark. Yeah, so, yeah, that is true. Are there any coyotes around where you're talking about? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got a motion, second approved. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Thank you. Stay with your planning presentation. Planning. Sure. Planning department. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. <clears throat> we have before you our subdivision lot inventory uh, for January 2004 to the present. Uh, on this list, over the last month, we had 13 building permits issued. We did have one final plat approved, train house, section one. Uh, no new major plats were recorded. On the third page of that, you'll see uh, the total number of recorded lots are 3,284. Uh, total permits issued were 1,670, and the total available lots is 1,614. That is down just a little bit from this time last year, as you can see, 1,651. So we still have quite a bit of inventory, but it does seem to be dropping just, just a little bit. So uh, if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to sort of answer them. If not, we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, zoning case. Cases. We have one rezoning case and one uh, just resolution amendment. The, Zoning case is for some property along West Jefferson Pike. Uh, the applicant is proposing to build a self-storage facility with covered boat storage. Uh, there was some talk about using an existing access <coughs> easement to the property. Uh, however, during the discussion at the Planning Commission, uh, there's the ability to create their own uh, access to the property, which the applicant desired, which of course we have no issue with or fine with that. Uh, the covered boat storage is proposed to be constructed out of aluminum and it fu functions as the outside wall for two-thirds of the facility. Uh, during the Planning Commission discussion, uh, one of the uh, items that was brought up was the possibility of making that uh, a brick or masonry type exterior. That way uh, it would pr present a, a, a better appearance and could act as more of a buffer than the uh, metal exterior would. Uh, that was made one of the conditions. Uh, to this application. Uh, to the southwest of the property, uh, there are parcels that are zoned C2 that date back to 1972 and 1987. Uh, the property is also located about 3,000 feet away from the intersection of Jefferson Pike and Lebanon Pike, uh, which also contains commercial zoning and businesses. Also to the northeast of the property, uh, there was a temporary resource extraction permit granted back in 2006, and the North Area Plan does show this as a mixed use area, which would support activities such as like commercial office and housing. Uh, another discussion point that the Planning Commission had was just the activity at the unit itself. You know, there were some concerns about bands possibly practicing or people living in the units and if there's any restrictions on that. So you see uh, the conditions on the, uh, the back of the staff comments page that there were a number of conditions that were added in there regarding just no one living there, uh, no businesses being uh, conducted out of the uh, units, no music band practice, those kind of issues. So that uh, had a fair amount of planning commission discussion, no real uh, community discussion as I recall. 
and that was recommended approved by a unanimous vote 10 4 and 0 against. The other item that we have before you, you recall, <clears throat> excuse me, back in September, uh, staff had brought to you some uh, revisions to our section 19 or article 19 of our zoning resolution regarding flood hazard districts. Uh, those have been approved. Uh, staff did uncover a couple other minor amendments that needed to be made, really just a couple of, of typos really is what they were. Uh, we've included those in there. There were a number of, of uh, changes that uh, FEMA had requested of us. These were just uh, basically just got overlooked, which is, I'll just say as plain as it is, that's what happened. So uh, we did find those. Uh, FEMA has not said anything to us about it. We caught these on our own. So we're just asking that these uh, changes be made. This was recommended for approval by the Planning Commission again by unanimous vote. Uh, again, just so you know that this doesn't change any of our processes. This is really just making us consistent with the uh, FEMA regulations. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Anybody got any questions on the report? Not took a motion to approve. Doug, real quick, on the um, back with the FEMA maps and so forth. When you look at the situation that we had on Jefferson Pike you, years ago, you remember a lot of the flooding out there. How are you? How how are the county safeguarded? from that, I guess it was a, they use that as a tension and end up being a sinkhole that would rise up when the, the Stones River would rise. How, how are we protected from something like that happening again? <coughs> well, the situation, of course, is Greenwood, where you're talking about. The uh, subdivision at that time, um, the regulation stated that if they handled the water and it flowed off site and you got a consent to drain that you were that was approved the developer happened to own the property that was next door he gave himself a consent to drain it was approved so it didn't take into consideration those those sinkholes and since then we've changed regulations and um, they can't the sinkholes can no longer be used in any form as part of the drainage system and we check and then of course we're trying we're requiring detention on all of the uh, lots and in fact new regulations will require some form of retention plus detention so that in yeah, yeah. doing that we're putting in safeguards too so we don't get in that same situation yes sir okay <clears throat> take a motion to approve the report then second all in favor uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, before you leave here, uh, you want to bring this up on the egg will hit the point. They got that little project wet that comes underneath it. Oh uh, yeah, let's do they that first and then uh, send it together. Yeah. Project wet. Yeah. Uh, came before you a couple months ago on project wet, and yeah, this is the same thing. Uh, we were looking through the uh, minutes and we we just we want to clarify what we're asking for is permission for the county mayor to sign these documents what i've done is taken the the budget breakdown as it applies if you look at our budget line item we have thirty five thousand dollars in our line item to be made up of, of seventy five hundred from us and then the rest of it to come from uh, laverne smyrna and murfreesboro it turns out our portion will be less than seventy five hundred but this breaks it down uh, 30,000 will be funneled through us for the, the contract to discovery and center for the facilitator and for supplies. Uh, the additional $5,000, which uh, originally was put in our line of, of turns out Murfreesboro had a contract in place that we were able to use, and so they're going to take care of the kits for the kids. Our portion for the total uh, 35,000 is going to run about 6,600 or $6,700, and that's basically what the the, the budget here breakdown. So I want to give you the breakdown. But what I'm asking for is go take it to the county commission to get permission for the mayor to sign the documents to proceed with the budget. Uh, Murfreesboro, Laverne, and Smyrna have already passed this resolution through their commission, and uh, they'll, be, they'll sign them as soon as the mayor does, so we can get, go ahead with the contract. Do we send this on the budget? Uh, the, it's already in the budget. We just need authorization to do this interlocal agreement, you might say, interagency agreement. We have the money in our budget to do this, but I'm not authorized to execute that little agreement. Well, I move we authorize. I'll second. <laughs> my, my question still is, Ben, we spend that money 
would, wouldn't it have to go it, through to well, the we budget just, committee? Well, we send it through the budget it's, and, and let them deal with it how they choose. Yeah, well. Because we're the conduit. We're just yeah. going to be the one. All they would be is just public work sent the budget for them just prove what you're saying. That would be fine. Then they would know to be. Clarification. Yes. Could you uh, restate what you've already stated in previous meetings of what WED is? Uh, Project WED is, is a, an education program for the school system. It's, a, it's an established national program, basically just several uh, chapters that you go through and present in the schools and it has to do with uh, dealing with stormwater runoff quality and quantity and so our permit our state permit requires that we provide one of the, the aspects of it is public education and this is a, a methodology that we're using to meet that requirement of our permit is this federally mandated or state mandated no it's federal it's federal mandate it comes through the state which in turn is mandated to us and we have to take care of it <clears throat> they all in. We need to call roll or just vote. Yeah. All in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, in how much storm water or in, in your storm water? Mm -hmm. um, is there anything done about people going down beside the creeks and rivers and digging and just leaving a small dike? Because uh, I know it affects the the water quality. Uh, you talk we about have one farmers in Smyrna, or well, it's where they dig out and use it on subdivision lots or whatever, and just leave a huge hole. Uh, well, to do that, they're supposed to come through our office and get an extraction permit. So if they're doing it and not complying with that, we need to know because then we can put a stop order on having to go through the process itself. There's a requirement that they stay 50 feet away from the the edge of the, uh, the <coughs> river bank, uh, so we have to enforce that also. So uh, this is in the county or cities? Now, if it's in the cities, it would be up to Smyrna. Smyrna has a similar type regulation because they took our stormwater ordinance and adopted the same thing it says in there. The state requires 60 feet or any kind of construction to stay away from the edge of bank, 60 feet. But there's no... Uh, provision in there to reclaim the property or anything. They can just leave a no, when, hole that fills up every time the river overflows. When they do an extraction permit in our office, they have to also come on a reclamation plan. So we don't, I mean, we have similar, some of those types of places that left in the past. We require them to have three to one banks and street and so, you know, put seed out and straw and, and come up with a plan to handle it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. You can vote on this. Sorry about it. Okay, next, uh, you've got in front of you uh, a letter. That's a letter from the city of Eagleville. They come up, they come up there often visiting us about the possibility of providing um, inspection for them for their subdivisions and streets. And in the back sheet of that on Exhibit 1, in November 2001, uh, there was an agreement reached between the city of Eagle and Rutherford uh, for the inspection of building inspections, uh, which David's office does for, for $25. And so they, they requested that we provide the same type of service for their subdivision of streets. They've got one subdivision of construction on our street. We have been providing this on an unofficial basis as requested from the city. This is just an, an official document uh, requesting <coughs> services and we're discussing it with the, the mayor. We talked to, to Doug and David also. Um, we recommend you approve this. We don't have any problem. We can provide this service without um, undue work on our staff because we've already got a couple of subdivisions in that area down there. We just do them at the same time. Invite the motion that we provide the services. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And, and I think this probably needs to officially go on through budget too, if you don't mind. Okay. Just so they know we're going to collect a little money here. It's nominal, but it's. Is, is any, is any, uh, anybody got any other business they want to ask for planning before release them? 
Yeah, I'd like to uh, suspend the rules and let uh, Mr. Abbott Lane come up in a real minute, two minute question. I'll say to that. Uh, before he does that, uh, if nobody else, had, I, I want to go ahead, Anthony, maybe you. Uh, the Adult Activity Center, we had discussed in the past and have a plan to redo the parking lot, take some an overgrown area out, uh, sort of between and behind the two buildings and uh, make that into an extension of the parking lot and to pave. Uh, just wonder where we are on that. What we did is um, in our office and working with, with Ben Lincoln got in touch with Murfreesboro and said, this is what we want to do, what do you need? And they, they said, we could use a GIS, give them a picture, and we put a drawing on it and sent it over to them. They did a, an in-house, they were going to handle it in-house. They did an in-house review. Um, it took us a while to get those comments back, which we got about a week ago. They now are asking us for full-blown drawings. Uh, we have to do a survey, put all this together. Um, we're going to ask them to allow us to put stone on there through the winter, but a couple of reasons. One of them is the asphalt plant is probably going to close within about three weeks. It's going to be difficult to get this back over there to them in time to do that, and then probably pave it in the springtime when the plant's open back. That's the plan we're, we're approaching right now. There's some things they're asking there we've got to work with. You know, some, you've got a, here a photo there. And you notice in the back, there's a lot of trees back there, but they're asking us to put in some additional landscape. Well, Usually in, in the county, we used to be having trees. I mean, they, they divide the landscape, but they want, or we have to fence it. So we've got to work with them because that's quite a bit of additional cost there. There's a couple other things they've got here. They haven't mentioned before that we're kind of we're trying to negotiate with them. But that's that's kind of the plan right now. The work plan is to try to get them allowed to put the gravel on there, go ahead and have the parking, and, and then pave it in the spring. Is there any stipulation in there on the retention other than just? leaving it like it is uh, there'll be a small probably a small retention area in the way in the back there to meet their stormwater requirements it, but it's based on the fact if you have more than 10,000 square feet of parking they had also some uh, comments about the flow being a little awkward well the flow is a little different because you have to allow for the bands and some larger vehicles in there so we're trying to negotiate with them on that also you don't think that uh, the way that's wooded up if you clean that parking lot out, you couldn't leave enough trees around there. That... We tried when we first we, we talked to the city about that, and then again, their comment is they're asking for additional landscape. They're asking for a landscaping plan. Landscaping plan. And we, I mean, I mean they've amazing. given us an official request that's standard form procedure, A, B, C, D, E, and we're going to have to jump through all those hoops and address those issues. Mm -hmm. Or is our initial conversation indicated, well, maybe not, we can, you know, just give us this little GIS drawing and Show us what you want, we'll take care of it. So things change somewhere between when we talked to them and when we got the comments. I would think they're probably re requiring certain types of trees <coughs> and bushes and well, it, how it's many. Not, and it's not that much detail. It just says provide a landscaping plan. And uh, so we'll count the trees and put them in a drawing. So we'll. Uh, We're gonna try. That may be what we do. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Dale. Real quick, when you look at the. Uh, like a, a base coat of asphalt. Mm -hmm. We had something come through smart a while back. If, um, it was on a parking lot. Joe may know more about it, but when you got the, the gravel down and you got the sealant, mm -hmm. the sealant over it, what, what's your thoughts on on that? That something long term, if you see it, whether it's a trucking company or something, how what's been your experience with with, with that type of material? As, as far as how long it'll last? Yes. Sir. Of course that'll depend on traffic if you got heavy trucks in there I mean, it'll it'll last a while but eventually it'll make, break up a lot quicker mm -hmm. now um do they go back and, and and do the process over again go back and seal it and then um steam roll it over and you if see you, that you i mean if you put the right mix down there when they mix in the mix it i mean it it should hold up yeah it'll, does it it'll to it mm -hmm. okay just want to get your thought, thoughts on that uh, when he mixes it at hot mix plant, I mean, it should be when you're putting it down with a paver. I mean, it should be getting, shouldn't have no problem there if you get the base under it, all right? That's when you're just sealing the stone and rolling it. Or 
Are you talking about actual pavement? Yeah, you 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 put that when you get your stone down, and then you you put some crust around over it and roll it, and then you put your mix right over it. It'll, it'll be safe. But you're not talking about putting a mix over it, are you? You're talking about sealing the stone. Well, that's sort of like a tar and gravel. My understanding it's like it's like gravel. <clears throat> that's then, all you do, and then you roll it. You don't put no seal over the gravel. It's got to be a brave little. But you're saying long term that hold that would hold up. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm hearing two different things. I'm hearing from you. It's no different you putting down a road. Was that the way the old roads were done year, years ago? Well, he's, he's not talking about. He's not talking about <laughs> a paved road. What are you looking at? Tar and gravel. Oh, you just talking yeah. about tar and gravel? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's. Different story there. That's not going to hold up the trucks. <laughs> no. How good does that hold up? That's not Years it. Mm -hmm. it don't even it don't hold up good enough. You don't even use it anymore. Right. Past a year. Mm -hmm. That's why they don't use it. Anymore. The roads like they are now in a trap or parking lot, and they wouldn't last no time. Yeah, that's with the heavy trucks. I mean, it's just yeah. I misunderstood. Okay, it's okay. better than dirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> and almost a goal. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, John. You said no. Yeah. You have a motion to suspend the rules, but you did not vote on it. I don't know if we need to. I just, if we need well, to. Well, you done got a motion. You got a second. <clears throat> yes, suspend the rules. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Up here. You can come up. Oh, all right. For the microphones, you might be. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to take just a moment, a minute or so. Uh, and I understand, uh, listen to y'all tonight, the process that y'all wrestle with all these problems and everything. The citizens for me to know that it's a difficult thing at best. They don't know all the things and hours I put in. I kind of got a feel on that over the last year. Well, to get to the point, uh, as you know, I've been uh, uh, working uh, on a problem with the rock quarry out of the Blackland area, the, uh, uh, essentially the, uh, specifically in the, the Rogers Group uh, rock quarry up there off uh, Burnt Knob Road, up on Burnt Knob. Uh, and um, there was some information that came forward during their open house. They had a couple of weeks ago that uh, I had that information myself, but the information has come out through other folks that have been told that the rock quarry uh, at presently is now 300 foot deep to the water. Uh, now, why is that a concern? Well, I've been researching this thing over the last year, and I've looked at the permit that they're cooperating under. And that permit was issued to the stone man uh, because of a lawsuit that the uh, state had, that they had against the county and the state appellate, yada, 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 go through the whole thing, ordered the county to give them a permit. All right, the permit, I have a copy of, of the permit, and the permit has all the, the information of the stamps and the register and the engineers, has all that information on there. But also on the drawings, the site plan, and on this drawing, it has information, specifications of how operation of uh, how things are laid out, how things are to be done. Well, uh, just go through the notes. Uh, there's just uh, notes here. I'll just read them right quick. Uh, note one, domestic water supply for office by well. Number two, proposed depth of the quarry pit is to be 60 feet at existing elevation of 800. And there, that's my big concern. Average weight of trucks leaving the site, 70,000 pounds. Proposed hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. I remember during all the, over the last year we had the issues about how they were going to operate, you know, according to the uh, expansion thing that we were still working on. Uh, my question, I'm real concerned of where the oversight is on this quarry. They have to operate, and I've been listening to the, the coach department talk about inspections they've done on businesses throughout the county, uh, small businesses. Uh, medium size, you know, everybody has uh, building permits that have been issued. Uh, I've researched and I have not found one building permit with Roger's name on it. 
unless something's happened in the last three or four months. It's right. The state the state uh, inspects uh, or your rock quarry, no. Well, county don't do that. They I was come going in to, I, I beg to differ with you, Mr. Chairman. I have researched that and have got the emails and from the commissioner and the folks about what they inspect and what the local municipalities are supposed to inspect. We'll let the Mr. Mayor speak. To you. Ms. Lena, I want to respectfully offer some comments here. You know full well we're in court with yes, the largest sir. group. And in an abundance of caution, I want to <laughs> encourage our committee members not to do anything that would influence, unduly influence our ability to defend that lawsuit. So, uh, and, and, and including our staff members. So uh, I'm just concerned that if we open all this discussion and start trying to review this, it's going to have a potentially a very serious impact on our ability to properly defend where we are and what's going forward. So this group can do what they choose to do, <clears throat> of course. But I, I don't think in my judgment it would be appropriate for us to start engaging into some sort of uh, evaluation of whether what we're doing is correct or not correct or who's doing it. And not that we shouldn't answer those questions, but I, I think you should address those questions privately with with our inspection people and uh, our planning staff and our building and codes enforcement staff to see if we can get at it. I don't think we should go on the record uh, defending uh, one way or the other what, what's taking place or hasn't taken place. So, I mean, that's that's just a word of uh, concern and warning. You can go with this wherever you choose to, but believe me, everything that we say has a serious impact on what will be, will be held accountable for uh, or what we're going to be uh, quoted, or what, who is going, whoever gets the deposition is going to be on the record and standing for something. And I don't think uh, that is a matter of a, a legal approach that our county attorney would suggest that we uh, <coughs> not here. Their representative is here. That uh, I think we should be do whatever we do in an abundance of caution. That's all I'm going to say about that. May I, may I, may I answer you back, sir? I mean, yeah, you can do what you choose. But with, with, with all due respect, I, I understand what you're saying, and 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 I would uh, tend to agree with it. I'm saying we need to get our arms around these things. This this is baggage from the past that we need to address. Uh, and there are times we have to make stands on, on you know what we what we stand for. The 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 questions. I, I'm not pointing fingers and saying things. People have done things wrong. I'm saying. We're in a process of evolution in this county. We're growing. We're trying to correct things. You put things in place that are very hopeful to me to correct some things intended, unintended, negligent, negligent in the past, whatever. That's the past of the past. We can't do anything about it. I'm just trying to bring something uh, to light here that we need to look at, we need to address it, and you asked me to, to ask those questions of people in places about those things. I have asked them, and the uh, answers that I were given were essentially, basically, well, they don't really know, and, and that's not putting any onus on anybody. I'm just saying, uh, from a quality standpoint, there is no oversight that I can find over, and I know that uh, people that have dog kennels, they go and inspect single people with just a one-man operation. This is a huge corporation. I have nothing against uh, 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 Rogers Group at all. They're a business. They're trying to do a business. But I care about this county intensely. I care about the use of our, our resources. But I understand the legalities of things and that you have to be, when dealing with the world, be as wily as the serpent. And I'll agree with that. <laughs> well, in any event, whatever our staff members may have told you, I mean, I wasn't privy to these discussions you've had, but there is one more layer of uh, address, and that's me. Yes, sir. And you, you're welcome to come even tomorrow for an appointment, and we'll discuss this, and I'll follow up with these gentlemen to see what they may or may not have told you. Yes, sir. Thank you. The law says it's on expansion, isn't it? Yes, sir, but not I can tell you this is going to all get in, get pulled in, through the whole process. But not the depth. Well, I don't even want to, I'm not going to say a, a, a surprise and shock at what all can be a part of yeah. this whole dis discussion. Yeah. We're going back to 1984. We all know that. You sure. lived, are you a neighbor over there, sir? You, yes, sir. Okay. That's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the reason. That's the reason all this process started. Yes, sir. 
Uh, well, I, of course, I do have a, a dog in this. Yes, sir. I'll just, just say this is on my part of being chairman. Uh, I appreciate the mayor being to all these meetings that, that we have. We we need his guidance. And, of course, I didn't know. Nobody at this table know when Mr. Lane come up what he was going to bring up. He asked to speak. We was going to let him speak. But if if we felt like it, uh, if it's uh, pertaining to this uh, rock quarry where they're talking about expansion and all that, I, I don't think we need to myself. I mean, I, uh, I think it needs to be handled in a proper way. And I would respect you, Mr. Lane, if you would hold those comments, go through the proper procedures, it'd, it'd save all of us from yes. time oh. and trouble. Hopefully, Mr. Chairman, as the future progresses and the long-range planning, uh, comprehensive planning thing comes up, there will be guidelines in that to give a citizen the guidelines of the procedure to go through, which I have buried through the, the resolution as much as I could have and tried to figure out the best way to go at this and held off and held off for the longest time. And I didn't know. I, I figured to bring it to your committee it would be the best well, I think uh, the mayor, like he said, I think you could get with his office tomorrow. He'd be glad to meet with you and see if he could uh, yes, sir. get you some answers there. I appreciate that. All right, sir. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Okay. I've got one other question now before you leave. Yeah. I just got one follow-up on that one. Okay. Where, do, where are we with the lawsuit? I haven't seen or heard anything of that. Do are we just in limbo with that? At this point? It's sort of in the holding pattern. Okay, I mean that was I hadn't seen. Well, I mean, it's it's action is taking place, but nothing of any substance yet. Okay, so it's Trying just we're just waiting on the who or Corlew or, or or the chancellor or whatever yeah. it is. Or are we just working through a process? Yes, we are. Okay. The wheels of justice grind exceedingly <laughs> slow. Oh, I know. but exceedingly fine. <laughs> yeah, correct. All right, Mr. Johnson. In the property management, we're discussing uh, properties that the county owns, be it surplus property or whatever, it's property management. And we have the uh, the convenience center at Hockvale, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> and we have across the road uh, the Dolan property. Uh, do we have anything? Or anyone working on that at this time as far as expansion of the convenience center or I guess that's max you might know well, said, Mr. Williams, the answer you to that me. is we are starting to work through that process I talked to Mac yesterday and see if he can go out there and uh, I can meet with him or, or whomever and see which property is going to be best for the convenience center. Uh, we've been surveying uh, as we can to, to see whether we want to move the fire department over there or move the convenience center over there and to kind of analyze what the future plan for the, for the section is and see which one's going to best fit. And I guess it boils down to economics. Uh, it would be cheaper to run to put the convenience center over there. However, from the pure looks of everything, people seem to think it would be better if it could move the fire department over there and give the fire department the the more easily access in and out. But but the answer is yes, we are working on that, and, and I think Mac will address that when he gets up here. That um, he's kind of given a, a rough overview of which one could work, but. Uh, I don't. We got to get a, an exact plat of that so we can see how what's going to fit in. But yes, we are working uh, towards some solution on that, and and hope to bring something back up maybe by the first of the year. Well, I'd like to be involved in that since I'm chairman of property management. And that's our job as property management. Meet you there tomorrow at seven o'clock. No. <laughs> You say to be no, there, I'll uh, be there. That's too early. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. But yeah, no, we haven't formed any committee, but I thought that that would be forthcoming at some point after we had gotten through uh, the Rutherford County month and several other things that people had asked us to uh, wait to get through. With. But uh, uh, we are starting some discussion on that to see which way to go. And Matt can maybe give some more insight into that when he gets up here. Thank you. I wasn't expecting that one to come up tonight, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what Ron and I discussed yesterday. Uh, you've got two pieces of property there. The land, the uh, convenience center and the fire department share one piece, and then the other piece has actually nothing on it at this time except for an older building. Historically, there's a group out there who would like to see that older building refurbish a few other buildings done that way as well. If we put the convenience center next to it, which I think would be the, the least expensive move, you're not going to be able to match their historical view. The fire department, if their grant money comes through to build that, that may be the best thing to put them over there with the, the historical facade on the front to where it better matches those other buildings. Uh, so that what we were discussing yesterday was, do you go the cheapest way or do you go the way that's going to make it look the best for the long term? And that's, that's a decision that has to be made. And so, will and will the convenience center fit with the expansion that we need to do on right. the existing property? So it, it's kind of three phases. Right. So that property gets more narrow as it goes back, and we were looking at how we could arrange the center to get all the commodities in there for recycle that we want to do at a cardboard compactor. Uh, some possibility of doing some some things out there that we don't do anywhere else, depending on how that building lays. If that building were to stay there or be moved. So there's a lot of decisions to be made on that. Well, I guess what and I'm we'll trying to say made. is those decisions <laughs> are supposed to be basically made through property management. And we as property management haven't heard anything on it. And we just want to be in the loop. Oh, I don't think there's any decision going on. We no, there's not decision, but that's, that's what I'm saying. The discussion is part of property manager's job to figure out what is the best thing. Right. But you got to have your needs. You got to see what the need is before you go with the property, in my opinion. Let me, okay. let me I see what you're saying, saying but you need, like, you need the discussion about the convenience center. Maybe, maybe the mayor sure. can. Uh, well, I, I just want to say one thing. I want us to think outside the box here. I mean, that's not sure. the only potential use of this pro property. There may be some other things. I don't know exactly what they are. Right. It could be a small park. It could be a little neighborhood uh, area whereby we expand some sort of historical venue that I want us to be creative in this thought process before we just say this is option one or two. Think a little bit bigger than that Absolutely. and and uh, we'll, we'll work out this may be the right answer. Very well may be but let's, let's be a, just take enough time to really look a little bit broader in, in our view of what might be the best fit for that little community out there. Mayor, could we, what about the PBA? Could we get there? Opinion on some of that? I, I, PBA is good in executing plans. I don't think they're necessarily so good in developing plans. I think our community participants and residents out there can help us. I mean, from a cost perspective, they could give us some good input. Good well, won't you put it on the agenda for property management to start some discussion and form some sort of committee out of there? That was Okay, I did that, and that's why I came back here. Because okay. I said that nobody in property management knew anything about it. Well, nobody really knows anything and about any details. Well, I've just had casual conversation with different people to see what the community wanted. And I think Mac has done the same, and maybe Mayor Burgess has done the same thing on that to kind of get some outside of the box to see what was right. um, to, to go on. But uh, I guess what I'm saying is property management. I, as chairman of property management, would like to be in on that to know what's going on and not just have something brought to the committee and say, okay, this is what the community decided because it's property management's job to address the situation and along with everybody else figure out what we need to do with that property, not just have somebody come and say, this is what we want and, and basically already done. 
Well, well I, that wasn't what I was saying. What I was saying was there's no point in saying that we could use it over there as a convenience center if everything won't fit. That would be off the table if Mac looks at it and says we can't get everything over here that we need for this. Then that won't that will reduce what an option could be. But uh, uh, bringing it through property management is by, by all means the proper procedure and what to do. I mean, we haven't started any process on that yet, other than just some basic dialogue. I guess on the only thing that I would disagree with Mr. Johnson here, if you, if to start with, if you're looking at whether you're going to leave a convenience center over there or not, I don't know who it would be or not, because we've done about three of them since I've been here, and we didn't get property management. What I'm saying, I think uh, property management needs to be in there, but I think what you're trying to do now, and you all tell me what are right, you're trying to figure out where you think it's best to leave a convenience center what it is. Right. And if you decide to leave it where it's at, and then you're going to develop this other side, they would take that over. Right. And then all you would have to do is finish out where you are there when they moved over. But it'd be good when y'all uh, have a meeting, just, and the uh, chairman of Well, what Rob and I were talking about yesterday is, that site, like most of the others, have been there for 20 years. Probably has changed a whole lot over the last 20 years. And it served it fairly well, but it's a little bit on the small side. So let's plan ahead and far enough ahead that we can make it last at least another 20 years before we have to change it again. So will either site actually work? We don't know yet. Depends you, on what we decide that we need to have. Do you sites. have room for expansion with the current facility? The fire department and the, the convenience center share so if, the, if one of us were to move, the other one could take the, that location and do the expansion. Okay. Either one could. How, how large, large a site is it, it? It's pretty small either. Even if, if the fire department were to move, we would take the rest of it. Well, no, it's a little more right. The current site is about where he is, plus the fire department's about two points plus acres. The site across the street's about 1.7 acres. But it's, it's better, the uh, layout is much better across the street. It's more or less rectangular or square. The other one is very uh, strange kind of shape. It's just narrow. And it's, it's not it's nearly as usable and it's functional. So uh, well, I think we had a good discussion. I, I think we'll get there. Let's just be objective in the, in the whole discussion. All right, man. Okay, let's uh, start out with the landfill report. Landfill's a, a little more busy than we were this time last year. Um, not much, uh, but we're running running pretty well. Our business is up a little bit because of our neighbors next door raised their fees a few months back. Uh, our people that normally took everything over there are starting to bring some of the commodities that we can't accept uh, to us. The brush grinding process has begun. Uh, we're looking at two, possibly three weeks to have all that brush pile ground up and hauled away. Uh, we have a budget amendment for that here in a little bit as well. And then this month we have two holidays. Uh, Veterans Day on the 11th and Thanksgiving Day. Uh, the landfill will, will be closed both holidays. Yes. On the convenience center side of things, the trash volume is still down. We're still hauling a little less trash than we have in the past. That's due to the economy. People just aren't buying the things to throw away as they were in the past. Uh, the holiday schedule there, the 11th, is for Veterans Day is on Wednesday. The centers will be open on that Wednesday. The, uh, they will not be open on Thanksgiving Day, which is a Thursday, it's almost both day for us anyway. <coughs> on the recycle side of things, we're, we're making some pretty big strides. We uh, received some grant money. We have ordered containers. We've ordered uh, 26 containers and two compactors to do recycling with. Hopefully, we'll have the, the everything except the compactors in place by Christmas. And we should have recycled commodities in every convenience center with the exception of three, uh, possibly two. We're looking at Craner Road to make sure we can see if we can get things to fit in there. Leanna and Rockville are just way too small to do too much with those right now. Uh, uh, why are you there when you said Craner Road? Have you got a chance to look at that yet to see if, uh, if all the land's took there? No, sir, I haven't. Okay, go ahead. 
Uh, and then uh, a good thing that we got started this week finally is single stream recycling in the schools. We have five Rutherford County schools and one city of Murfreesboro school that we're doing a pilot program with. It actually started yesterday. Uh, what we're doing is taking existing trash containers at the school, converting them to recycle containers where all the commodities go in the same container, mixed together. We'll put it in the truck once it gets to Nashville and dumped out on the floor. They, that's where it gets separated. Uh, today was the first day to actually get those things serviced. And we picked up about 200 pounds per school. If you figure that out through the month, those six schools alone will generate roughly 24 tons of recycled material this month. And that's just with the preliminary numbers we're getting started, which we think we're going to get much better than that. So if this process works, we'll go through Christmas with it. Uh, and then we'll go county and citywide. Every school in the county and the city that we service will be doing single stream recycling. And that's going to get us a step closer to where we need to be in the future. Once we no longer have a landfill that we can use to put in this county and have to truck trash somewhere, we're just trucking trash, not recycling. I think that's a good thing. Now, as far as dollars, it's not going to save much dollars uh, because we don't pay tipping fee. If we were to pay tipping fee, it would be a big, huge number. Uh, household hazardous waste is this Saturday. Uh, we've gotten signs out. We've got things in the paper. We've got it on our website. We've done everything we can that we can think of to try to advertise. It's going to be held at the City of Murfreesboro Public Works Facility, the place where they grind brush on Florence Road from 8 until 2. Uh, it really expect a big crowd. I was talking to the solid waste director in Wilson County. Theirs got canceled, so they didn't have a household hazardous this year. So we'll probably wind up a lot of Wilson County folks coming to see us, and that's that's okay because it's a state sponsored thing. It's not a county. How dare you cancel? Budget cuts. Really? I I really suspect if the economy doesn't change and tax dollars don't increase. We probably won't have a state sponsor doing it in the next couple of years. That's the reason we're starting the Haley Road facility now, trying to get prepared for that. Uh, Haley Road uh, facility, as of last week, we've taken in 300,000 pounds of electronics since July. Uh, we do accept batteries down there. We haven't advertised that, but we do recycle batteries as well down there. As we go through that process and, and budget permits, we'll be able to, to collect more items in the future. We just haven't, we're still going through with the city of Marshboro to get our permits and all that kind of stuff done. Mr. Mm -hmm. Nolan, when you say batteries, would you describe what type of batteries you would take there? Uh, the recycle company that we're dealing with right now will take any type of battery. Uh, the alkaline batteries actually can be thrown away, but there are some recycled materials in but them. But if so we have automobile batteries, they're you, you would accept them. Right, automobile batteries, uh, rechargeable batteries for cordless tools, uh, rechargeable batteries for, for any of the other electronics. Uh, the company we're dealing with says they'll take them all. So what's coming in now, what we were doing before we found that out, we were taking the batteries out of remote controls. And Don just happened to be there one Saturday watching and see how we're doing things. He said, what are you doing that for? Well, you don't take batteries. Oh yeah, we will. So we're, we're it's a learning process for all of us. That he didn't realize we had them and we didn't realize he would take them. Well now, let me broaden the thing slightly. Okay. You, I believe you told me yesterday that you're about to be able to handle plastics at all the convenience centers, which you did, discouraged or did not take before. Mm -hmm. What do you do if you've got a whole bunch? Of, I know Blackman High School was interested in collecting soft drink plastic bottles. And I guess crushing them up or saving them and trying to dispose of them in a way that would get some uh, return. Is there any way to do that in the current climate? There's not much return at all. If you'll notice on the convenience center report, previous year from Alliance Recycling was six thousand dollars. We go to the next page. Current year is three thousand dollars. That's how that's their, our commodity value that we've taken in. The commodity market really runs behind the economy. So the commodity market is actually going to get worse 
and it's a couple of years behind the economy, so it's going to be bad for quite some time. Recycling is not profitable at this time, uh, but it is the right thing to do. So what well, we're trying to do is be as more of efficient as possible. And as far as their plastics containers, uh, we can talk with Alliance to see if they're interested in accepting that. If they'll take it to them, uh, you know, we can come up with something. Once we get our single stream program going, and Blackman actually becomes part of that system, they're not part. They're not in the pilot program, uh, and then we'll have a place for them to throw their plastic. Uh, now, one thing that some of the schools did ask when we met was, and we first met with Mr. Gill and Mr. Clardy, uh, and then the cafeteria person, I can't remember his name now, and then we met with each of the, the principals and the custodians from the six schools and then the cafeteria ladies. And it was that uh, Mimi was involved with it, and they developed a, a video to show within the schools to try to capture the, the classroom trash and that type of stuff. One of the questions I asked is, do they get a return? Do they get money for the, on the, off the rebate? No, they don't. That, that will come back to our department. Well, there's not much money to talk about there anyway. Well, thanks for answering that for me because I know the folks that were interested in doing that, the key club at Blackman, would be, uh, you know, needed to know. Mm -hmm. They would be much better off to collect aluminum. Okay. Or Thank the you. Valuable commodity. Do you see this single stream potential to run on into a uh, county wide beyond the schools? Yes. Somewhere down the road? I, what, what I've talked about with the people that we're dealing with is we've got a cardboard compactor in most every convenience center. Not all of them. We hope that in the next couple of years for every convenience center to have a cardboard factor. If the single stream works as well and we have to truck it very far, it may be in our best interest to single stream that compactor with all the recycled commodities. And that way we densify those loads where you've got a load of plastic that the container's full and it weighs, you know, way less than half a ton. Well, if you can match that up with your cardboard, your aluminum, and everything else, you don't get as much for each individual commodity because you do have it mixed. So there, there is a little downside there. But depending on your trucking expense, it may be worth not getting as much for the commodity. I mean, I was pretty impressed with the concept after going down there to the plant mm -hmm. of that single stream, and it appeared to me that folks would be much more convinced, easily convinced, to throw, what did we put in there, paper and cardboard and plastic and tin cans mm -hmm. and just a whole array of things that they can throw <coughs> in there and, and get rid of it all and save the, the landfill if, if that were something that would work. Right. And then the, the reason we've kind of kept this a little bit quiet and under wraps on the, the single stream is we don't want the public to help us at the schools. <laughs> and, and, and hear me out here. Yeah. It's not because we're against recycling. Uh, I was at uh, uh, Single Middle yesterday and then again today. They've got three eight yard containers that go three times a week. So there's nine dumps a week coming out of Single Middle. The intent of this program is to still dump nine times a week. But hopefully three of those times is going to be trash, six of those times will be recycled. So if Anthony lives next door and he starts bringing all this stuff over there to help us, now we're going to have 10 dumps a week and then 11 dumps a week. So we're not going to get, get the, prog you know, the progress that we're after. So what we're looking at is there's extra volume coming out of each school. The volume should remain the same. We'll just separate it and recycle and then trash the rest. So you can get an accurate count on on right. what okay. this is really doing. That's, reason, cost, that's the reason I haven't told you which six schools. <laughs> what's it cost for all of them? All right now it's costing us absolutely nothing. The uh, the pilot program, we're dealing with QRS, QRS out of Nashville. They are running the six schools and combining them with their routes uh, for the next two weeks. They will go to each school each day. Their driver is getting out and looking in the container. That's how I knew how much we dumped today. I called Mike and asked him. Uh, and they, they will look every day, and then that's how they're going to determine how often that container needs to be serviced. Now, as in, with any program, as the school gets more accustomed to it and they get better at it, our hope is it will wind up with roughly 70 to 75 percent recycle and 25 to 30 percent garbage. If you think about the trash in a school building, you got your, your cafeteria, cafeteria trash. And you got very little trash out of your classroom, most of it's paper products. So the, the recycling effort should be really well. And the cafeteria itself, we're trying to capture everything from the packaging side 
when they get their produce in and their, their groceries in, they have to unbox it, they dump the cans out and all that kind of stuff. That's the stuff that we want. That's the stuff that's not currently being captured anywhere. On the student side of the cafeteria in the dining room, most most of what we're going to get there is going to be the beverage container. Uh, a lot of the schools are using the, the fiberglass trays with it to rewash, so those get reused. The schools that are using styrofoam, that's not recyclable because it's contaminated. The plastic forks are not recyclable because they're contaminated. So a plastic beverage container, aluminum can, even the milk carton, as long as they pour the milk out. This is the only company that I've talked to that will recycle that wax paper cardboard. And then all the other thing I have is the budget amendment. Do so you want to do this? No. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, move. Move to approve the report. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now we'll take them, please. Okay, the budget amendment is for the grinding process. We bid, did bid that process out. It's $39,000. Uh, so we talked about that yesterday, too. Uh, what we're asking to do here is, is this brush was brought in during a tornado, and we did charge for it as it came in. So that revenue was put into our fund balance. So we're asking to take this $39,000 out of the existing fund balance, balance to pay for the process. It's just kind of closed the loop on the brush. Okay, call the roll now. Commissioner Daniel? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Sparks? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Jernigan? Yeah. Somebody got anything else from Mac before we leave? Uh, Haley Roadside. Uh, yeah. All right. Talked to before about maybe trying to do cooking oil out there, recycle cooking oil as well as the motor oil. I think you were already going to do the motor oil. Right. What we will consider in this. Where we would like to be with the Haley Road site in the future, and it may have taken us two years to get there, it's a little longer than I hoped for. Uh, but of course, the recycled commodities that we're currently taking electronics, paint, motor oil, and a breeze cooking oil and batteries. Uh, it may be cause them to locate. That's what all this stuff stands for. Uh, that the household hazardous waste would collect. Uh, currently, we do not want to accept the fluorescent bulbs, the long bulbs. The best price I can find right now is four and a half cents a foot to dispose of those, and we can't afford it. And there's no way we can take those in for free and pay for that disposal without charging to take them. Um, you know, you can take them to the HSW for now. Uh, some of the stores around town will accept them. Most of them will not take the long bulbs. If, if it's coming out of your home and you just have a couple, they can go and crash. If it's coming out of your business and you got a pickup truck load, no, they have to be disposed of properly. What schools do, what schools do with those? They pay to have them done. Uh, Mr. Mankin pays to have them done for all these buildings, and it's, it's a pretty extensive process. Don't they have special? Bins, they put them in, they're sealed yeah. and mm -hmm. filtered and all that. Right. I just got some questions about what Mac brought to us last week about the uh, rules of the convenience centers. And last month. Huh? Last month. Last month. <laughs> Seemed like last week. When you get my age, it goes back quick. Uh, I guess the biggest thing that I would like to see us change is that these <clears throat> rules would be posted so everybody know what the rules are. Uh, some of them that I'd like to tweak and do something, but that's not as big an issue for me is, for example, guy shows up with his second pickup truck load that he has gathered up because his wife has told him that he needs to clean the stuff out and he's got to take it back home. I feel sorry for that man. He doesn't have to take it back home. No. He just has to take it to a different center. Now see, this just says one per day. But, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you're just going to have it one per day, I mean, that's okay. But is there an, a, a less expensive, inexpensive way that we can say, here are the rules right here when, when people come in. I think Anthony was saying that at Weekly Lane that they were posted 
but I know down uh, in some others that I've been to that they that they aren't. So just so people can know what the rules are, right? As opposed to showing up and saying that that's kind of that would be irritating to me if I had, uh, gone through that process to do that, and then you, you can't do that. And, and that's where my complaints have come on two different things when when that has happened. So. They just didn't know it, and they thought the convenience center people were making rules up because they didn't like them. I don't know what they thought. That's right. But, and uh, yeah, I understand exactly what you say. Uh, and I've gotten with Amy Hardman, and we're trying to clean up her websites. Of course, I printed y'all off some copies of the websites for last month, uh, trying to clean them up and get them a little more precise and a little more accurate. Uh, there was some phrasing that the mayor and I went through that we need to change the way some of the, the rules were phrased to make them a little more accurate as well. Uh, and then some of our things need to be just where we set it in stone, we're done with it. Uh, I know Mr. Gooch would like for the landfill to be open every Saturday all day long. I'd like for it to be closed every Saturday all day long. You know, so <laughs> what we compromised on for this last summer was that the landfill was open the first and third Saturday from from uh, eight until noon. If that's going to be our process going forward, we can go ahead and have our signs printed. We can get it in the website. Right now it's in the website that way. Uh, but we need to figure out what we're going to do and, and, and stick with it until something major changes to where we need to make this a definite change. And then we can get posted the uh, convenience center signs. All of those were the original signs. I'm actually surprised they've held up as well as they have. They have way too much information on them. So those signs actually need to come down. We need to have a sign that, that has open and closed the hours. And basically that's all that needs to be on there. To make it small enough that when you drive by it, you've got a chance to read it. The signs that we have now, you've got to stop and sit there in the road for a little bit before you finish <laughs> the reading of uh, If any of you have been to the Weekly Lane Convenience Center recently, the town of Smyrna has done a wonderful job in putting up signage. I mean, if you go up there at night, you get blinded because they're all reflectors. Uh, but it, it states out there on Weekly Lane, going both directions, to sign out in front of the center of what what hours we operate, the days that we're open, and it's asking not to block the street to go on in. They restripe the street to help us gain better entrance. Uh, give the mayor credit for this one. He asked if we could look at a better way to do recycling at Weekly Lane. And after he mentioned it, I looked at it. All the recycle containers were out there next to the exit gate. We moved those to the center of Weekly Lane Convenience Center. And it actually has helped. We were generating a load of plastic a week. Since we made that move, we generated a load of uh, three loads of plastic a week. So apparently people were actually recycling better. I don't know if they just didn't see them there. They just chose not to deal with them where they were. But they're on the same piece of property, just a different location, and we've got more results out of it. But the point that Mr. Williams is making, we be we're happy, and we need to consolidate and improve our signage. We have so many rules, quote, on these convenience centers, no one sign will hold them. We're going to have to do some very creative <laughs> work to try to get this consolidated and put those priority items on there that are re uh, easily readable and understandable. So if you just look at the page that we have here that's just on that website, <clears throat> it's too many to put on a sign. So you well, have got to really work on what, what really needs to be on the sign. Well, that's uh, one thing that, that Mac and I talked about on that, that that is a problem. But if you at least put the highlights only one load per day, the ones that would create the biggest problems for people. That's what I'm saying. We got to prioritize these, and, and just prioritize that. But uh, another mm -hmm. way of doing it would be to just put up one of these rules and and some sort of, uh, uh, for lack of a better analogy, the real estate companies when they have auctions and things, they have these little things that people can, if they're interested in knowing what the rules are, they're stuck right there. So if there were such a visible box that was stuck down and you can say here if you're interested here are the rules just so people have the opportunity because out in my neck of the woods the getting on the internet before you go to the <laughs> go to the convenience center it is uh, not happening as much as it might in other areas so that was my only concern about giving something out there for those give people opportunity to to know what the rules are before they show up with that that's that's my that was my right. biggest bad on that. 
And I'd like to see more than one load, but I understand, better understand why this needs to be there. There's, there's, do we need to prioritize that? Or? No, we need to let Matt work on that. Okay. Yeah, well, I think he can handle some of that, and, and okay. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get this done. Good enough. Yeah. Uh, weekly road, they're not posted on a sign where everybody just no, drives in and sees them. They're usually on two or three or more signs, <laughs> depending on the, the location. Well, I just like to, I, I guess where I got the, the issue was somebody told the guy that he can't do that, and he says, How do you know? He says, Because I say so. Okay. And if there'd been a sign up here that he could point it to and said, That would have uh, led to fewer phone calls and, and, and less aggravation. Right. Or if you had one of them sheets there and give it. Yeah, we, we passed those out. We should yeah. have those available again. Yes. And those are actually outdated. That yeah. if you read the bottom of it, it actually <laughs> talks about last that. year's household papers. Right. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll make those available too. Nine and nine percent of people. Well, when we pass those out, I asked some of the center attendants if they used them, and most of the results were well. Next week when they came back. That was the last thing that came out of the trash can. I mean, that was the first thing that went in. <laughs> we tried. I didn't say if I asked my the people that comes up there complaining would be the people I'd give one and say. Give one to there and take her uh, yeah. the roof. Here it is. Ninety-nine percent of people you're not going to have. They're not going to have a problem with. It. Right. But these aren't posted anywhere. No. Uh, so. Could you just laminate it? That's, that's what Rob. That's what I was saying. Just laminate it and stick it up yeah. somewhere as a as a. All righty. All right. Real, real quick, Mac, on the um, the the entrance over on Weekly Lane looks good, but they're they're not pulling that gate open all the way. You know, it's got three lanes, but if you go through there, they'll you only have it open for two. I've seen it for about three weeks like that. I don't know why they. They saw you coming. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what. I'm sorry about it. I'm sorry about it. I'm sorry about it. With with some of the public out there, <laughs> get them it's, it's, and help it open. You know, I, I talked to a lady <laughs> Friday, and she called Ron because I asked Ron if she called him. She's out here, his district, and a uh, real nice lady. She was extremely nice, and she was concerned about some of the rules and the way we enforce them and some other things. The center attendants are at a huge disadvantage. Uh, you can ask somebody to do anything you want to ask them to do. If they're willing to do it, they'll do it. If they're not willing to do it, they're not going to do it. Yeah. And our center attendant is like a dog with no teeth. They can ask them to do it, but if they refuse to, what recourse do they have? You know, so we need to look at that some way to where there's some kind of enforcement or punishment, you know, for lack of a better word, to where we can get the public to do the right thing and know that there's they have to. And right now, you, we've got some out there that just blatantly will not do what the center attendant asks them to do. Yeah. Well, just take the tag numbers and That's report right. them to uh, to me. Really well, what is the if we had rules up there? Know what they're supposed to follow? But okay. anyway, I'll leave that alone. Over there at the behind Kroger and Sam's for the illegal dumping that's been going on, people throwing their trash out there. And I was by Kroger the day I, you know, I talked to you. Freddie was over picking the trash out, like Joe, y'all been talking about. He had inmates out there, um, and just you know, he pulled out the people's names and I guess get it to bar for the fines. But what is how much is the fine? Two hundred and two hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Time to pay the court costs and the whole thing. Well, could we not put some signage on those, on that cardboard container, or on, on some of the dumpsters, or something that would that would uh, mention that? We could. Uh, some of the people, and it's like we've discussed before, most of the people are going to try their best to do the right thing at the right time. Yeah, they're going to try their best to. Occasionally, you're going to have a mistake, but you've got a few out there that doesn't matter. If you gave them the moon, they wouldn't take it. They, there's just some reason they're wanting to do the wrong thing. I don't know why. Uh, but that's the issues that we have with those unmanned centers. Most of the people are trying to do the right thing. You just have a very small percentage that are really messing it up for everybody else. It, we spend, or Freddie spends, uh, five days a week going around and cleaning those things out. Today, he was at Sam's and picked up a pickup truckload of stuff out of there. It was clothing and furniture and stuff that's nowhere close to being recycled. Whoever left that knew they were just trying to find a place to dump yeah. Uh, and that's the aggravating part, man, trying to figure out how to get that stopped. Uh, Freddie will take the pictures of it. If there's addresses in there, he'll take pictures of the addresses. He gives it to Bart. Bart goes and files the warrants for them. They go to court. Depending on how the pictures were taken, sometimes the judge will throw it out. Uh, you know, if it's not a clear image, 
or if the judge can't prove that that was you know this envelope that was in this trash bag if that envelope was in the paper container that envelope supposed to be paper and ignores that it was in a bag full of trash so you know bart bart really is, is trying his best to help us but he's having a hard time yeah hmm. well dave news journal did do a story on it and i want to applaud jimmy hart and tay Lowell for for covering mm -hmm. okay and i sent yeah. them some pictures i didn't get those to the bag but i sent sam yeah one suggestion if, if freddie had a crew cab truck he could get three more inmates in there that could that could help it costs money that we don't well have. i know well, it's frustrating for me when I see people driving one Tahoe, one man driving a Tahoe, where well, you can get five inmates and knock some of that out. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. We'll drive one vehicle. Thank you, Mike. You know? Thank you. Okay, the next report is on the highway department. First item up is uh, drainage easement approval. Uh, <coughs> Most approved. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second item is uh, where they got two uh, speed limits back from the sheriff's department. We need to approve. Well, y'all down there smart on uh, where you know what happened down with Charles for Pike. We were reported by some residents you had different speed limits between Wilson and Rutherford. And they changed it with it all be the same. We need a motion to approve speed limit. Motion approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I still have a problem with 20 miles an hour on any street. <laughs> Well, you would have to go in this subdivision and, and look, and you would probably explain it to you. I've, I've been in the subdivisions that they said was, should be 20 miles an hour, and I sure couldn't see it. And I didn't see the neighbors doing 20 miles an hour. <coughs> it's, it's pretty would you include time. the square on that? Huh? I was asking the honorable gentleman uh, if he would include the square on there's no street that you should have 20 miles per hour. I, I'll speak of some I think it's 15. Okay. That's what we're thinking. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Nobody does 40 mile an hour count for pipe. And I'm comfortable with 40 mile an hour, but people do 50 on that. I'm yeah, I mean, that's the reason uh, the sheriff will tell you on any of these is low. They'll probably be doing more than that. Yeah. Well, I agree about cows for pike, but you're doing them both together, so I say no. Well, cows for pike's a highway where a lot of traffic is right here, and so it'd be with short streets with kids on it now. Yeah. It's a whole lot of difference in that subdivision there. <clears throat> They've been some kids like that run over now. They had several people complaining on it. What are they run over because the parents are not watching them keep them out of the street or they being run over because yeah. somebody's going over the speed limit? They run, they more you concerned know. with their, when they got their kids out there and somebody coming through their 30 and 40 mile an hour. Yeah. Yeah. When you're in a neighborhood that they ought to be really have enough judgment that nobody would have to tell them they ought to be doing about 15 to 20. Right, but there again, the judgment is to keep the kids out of the middle of the street. Yeah. That's the reason for passing these, or if they do catch them, they'll be fine. We have the streets to drive on, not to pay on. My Anybody got any other business? Real, real quick, I want to ask the mayor and Mac on, on the workhouse inmates. What what can we do to get to get them working some of the convenience centers to help out there? So long range. I'm not talking about short term. I'm talking long long term. We'll, we'll give you an answer on that later. Okay, but I'm serious. Put, if you had him in a crew cab truck, we can get some more inmates in there, knock them centers out. With those trash you're talking about, you knock that out in half the time. Uh, you, uh, I'll give you a little advice on that. You can get too many of them together too if you ain't careful. Freddie, Freddie, handle them. I don't know. 
be surprised sometimes when you get too many. We've experienced that. So. Okay, I'll move with Johnny.